I would like today to give you uh, some perspective for understanding uh, Moshe's methodology, Moshe Feldenkrais's approach to learning. The Feldenkrais method is an approach, I, I like to call it um, neurophysical learning, NPL, just to play around with the letters a little bit. And I'd like to explain to you kind of where that comes from, um, what, what the thinking behind it is. I, 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 the reason I want to do that is because I think doing these lessons can be somewhat mysterious. It's such a different approach than other ways of learning. It's not the kind of exercise most people think about when they think about exercise. But as Cynthia told you, I'm a movement scientist. In a movement science, we think about four different kinds of exercise. Um, uh, strength and conditioning, endurance, flexibility, and coordination. The first three um, all are based on the same kind of principles. You have to work harder to improve. So if you're strengthening, your muscles have to work more than normal in order to get stronger. The same thing if you're doing endurance, right? If you're running long distance races or doing a triathlon. And also in stretching, we go to the end of the range and we ask for more. When it comes to coordination, and, and for me, the Feldenkrais method is primarily about coordination. Coordinating our sensory input with our motor output, the sensory motor loop, because that's how we coordinate our, our physical body. I'm going to talk more about that in a few moments. But when it comes to coordination, we have to do less, not more. And so the Feldenkrais method addresses the education of human beings through action. All of these things are connected, feeling, acting, sensing, and thinking at any one moment in time. But our way of working with human beings, with improving human ability with developing our potential is through action. And he identified action as having three components, timing, orientation, and manipulation. Muscles are stupid, right? It doesn't mean that they don't function on their own, that they don't have some inherent intelligence in the way they're designed, but they're part of a larger system. The muscles do what the brain tells them to do. So when Feldenkrais used the word manipulation, he meant how the brain uses the muscles to manipulate the skeleton. As a, you know, as a movement, as a kinesiologist, I can tell you a lot about how muscles work and which muscle does what job. So, and, and Maybe many of you can, and all of us can kinesthetically from our own sensation. You know, if I lift my arm up to the side, well, I can feel the muscle here that connects my arm to my shoulder doing the work of lifting my arm up. And that would certainly be the answer on a test, which muscle are lifting your arm. But you know, if it was that simple, there's something wrong with that picture. If I lift up my arm, I change my center of gravity. So what we're talking about, usually when we talk about movement, is we're talking about the public part of that movement. And if you'll pardon the phrase, there's a private part to it as well. There's the unseen part. And the unseen part is what has to happen inside the rest of my body and my trunk and my legs with my head to keep me from falling over. So when we say coordination, we don't mean the coordination of a part of the body, a part of the body apart from the rest of the body. We mean coordination of the entire system. 